The F-16 Fighting Falcon is one of the fastest and most capable jet fighters of the past decades, partly due to its immensely powerful engine, which can produce over 30,000 pounds of thrust and catapult the aircraft to Mach 2 speeds. So much power requires special maintenance to ensure the engines always operate to their full potential, and they are continually taken to specialized facilities for inspections and repairs. Fortunately for air crews, the process for removing, dismantling, and inspecting an F-16 does not require the use of intricate instruments, and U.S. Air Force footage shows the process to take the engine from the aircraft in detail. Once removed, an F-16 engine is taken to a specialized facility for meticulous testing. These facilities are so loud that airmen working inside them have to wear special protection, as the engines are tested at almost 85% of their maximum power. Ironically, they're called hush houses. But testing at so much capacity can also bring unexpected circumstances, and the airmen must be acutely aware of plenty of hazards that surround them. The F-16 Fighting Falcon The General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon is a compact, multi-role fighter aircraft that is highly maneuverable and has continually proven its worth during dogfights in air-to-air -air combats and air-to-surface attacks. The Falcon has rightfully earned its second nickname, the Viper, for its agility and strong resemblance to the audacious snake, known for striking its prey when it least expects it. Over 4,700 F-16 Fighting Falcons have been built since its introduction in 1976, and their astonishing performance and relatively low cost have made them the fighter aircraft of choice for the United States and many of its allies. Some of the aircraft's main features include its frameless bubble canopy, side-mounted control stick, relaxed static stability or fly-by-wire flight control system, and sophisticated ejection system. Most impressively, it is renowned for its devastating M61 Vulcan cannon and its capability to mount additional weapons in 11 different locations. Two engines. When the single-engined F-16 Viper was first envisioned by General Dynamics, the power plant selected was a Pratt & Whitney F-100 PW200 afterburning fan jet, or turbofan, which was a modified version of the F-15's engine. This successful engine was rated at almost 24,000 pounds of thrust. Nevertheless, the transition to the F-16 was not an easy one. The revamped F-100 PW200 engine was prone to rollbacks and compressor stalls, and testing demonstrated that the thrust would suddenly go idle for no apparent reason. Regardless, the first F-16s were rolled out with that engine, and the USAF ordered all the fighters to be operated within dead-stick landing distance of bases, which is when an aircraft loses all its propulsive power and is forced to land. However, the F-16s were able to operate as expected only when the engines were upgraded with the Operational Capability Upgrade, or OCU. This system introduced a digital electronic engine control unit that significantly reduced stall occurrences and improved reliability. The upgraded F-100 PW220E engine was introduced in 1997, after the USAF's alternate fighter engine program, which marked General Electric's entry as an engine provider for the F-16. In addition, the company also introduced the F-110 GE-100 turbofan. The engine was initially limited to 25,735 pounds of thrust. Still, the use of the Modular Common Inlet Duct, or MCID, allowed it to achieve over 29,000. A numerical system was established to mark the difference between F-16s equipped with different engines. For example, all the blocks ending in zero, such as Block 30, were powered by a General Electric engine. In contrast, the blocks ending in two, like Block 32, were fitted with Pratt & Whitney engines. If the F-16 engines were not already powerful enough, the IPE, or Increased Performance Engine Program, made both engines more effective and faster. The F-100 PW229 engine's performance on the Block 52 eventually increased to an impressive 29,160 pounds of thrust, while the Block 50 used an F-110 GE-129 engine and reached 28,590 pounds. 
What's more, the latest engine iteration is currently used by the US and other allies can reach a maximum thrust of over 32,500 pounds, and such powerful engines need to receive regular maintenance to prevent even the slightest malfunctions, as they can prove fatal during a flight. Fit for flight. The General Electric F-110 engine currently powers almost 85% of the F-16s employed by the U.S. Air Force. However, an F-16 must undergo a thorough inspection every 300 flights. Air Force footage shows how pilots remove the powerful engine from the aircraft without any issues or the assistance of ladders or stands. 80% of the access panels are within reach of the airmen, who can be seen pulling out the engine without complicated maneuvers. A phase inspection can last up to 15 working days, and goes through almost 120 separate work cards to check that everything is ready to go. Usually, 10-person crews work on two shifts for a week during an active inspection. In addition, there are over 340 individual inspection steps carried out by the maintenance teams. The footage shows how the crews inspect and depanel the jet for specific checkups. The primary purpose of dismantling the engine is to identify the slightest discrepancies so that they can be immediately fixed. Electrical equipment, fuel cells, and other critical components are also checked to find any possible malfunctions. Then, if the required parts are not available, they are ordered from different suppliers. In an interview with Sergeant Adrian Wilson in October of 2009, Senior Master Sergeant Stephen J. Ede, the 113th MXS Propulsion Element Supervisor, said, quote, During engine tests, we monitor parameters such as fan and core speed, engine vibration for the fan, compressor and turbine rotors, torque motors on various operating components installed on the engine, oil pressure, and oil temperature, just to name a few. Finally, the specialized crews look at engine parameters that Air Force pilots will never see, but that are part of the overall process to comply with the requirements of a safe flight. Hush Houses One of the most prominent locations where F-16 engines are inspected and tested is Joint Base Andrews, where the District of Columbia Air National Guard 113th Maintenance Squadron has a facility dubbed the Hush House. This name is used to describe the engine test cell facility, which is anything but silent. Although the soundproof structures ensure that the decibels from roaring engines are hardly noticeable from the outside, the sound is at another level on the inside of the facility, for engines often run at full volume afterburner during testing. Sergeant Nina Brown from the 56th Fighter Wing Public Affairs said, quote, it's called a hush house because it's a noise suppression system. It gives us the capability to test engines 24 hours a day without disturbing the local community. Hush houses are the last stop before an engine goes back into an F-16. Once the engines are inspected and fixed, they are taken to a trim pad, where the crews perform high-powered aircraft runs above 85% of the engine's rated capacity. A trim pad is a concrete pad with a specialized hull backplate installed in the foundation, and the footage shows how an F-16 engine is slowly turned on before the testing. Footage taken at the Atlantic City Air National Guard Base in Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey in January 2017 gives a glimpse of the facility and how an F-16 engine is tested. Reducing over 30,000 pounds of static thrust during afterburner operations is extremely loud, and the crews must use specialized ear gear to prevent injuries. While an engine is being tested, facility operators oversee several parameters in control panel monitors and physically check the engine for leaks or possible malfunctions. Precautions Besides the deafening noise inside the hush house, the workers also have to be careful about several hazards that can harm them. During an interview with the U.S. Air Force District of Washington, Sergeant Timothy Shiley said, quote, There are so many moving parts internally that could easily come apart. Fuel and oil could spray on you. When we run engines on the test stand, we're on the sides, top and bottom, looking at the engine, and we have to have constant communication to make sure everyone knows what the other is doing at all times. If precautions are not taken, things can go wrong very quickly, 
and there have been reports of aircraft that have gone loose during high-powered runs and have caused internal damage to the infrastructure. On other occasions, airmen have been sucked into jet engines and have only survived thanks to their helmets or equipment getting stuck into the blades before them. Depending on the engine or the specific guidelines, a test can take as little as 15 minutes or extend to more than five days to approve for flight. Still, the crews are always ready for unpleasant surprises with each new engine that arrives for testing and maintenance, and they know each motor is different and that the routine is not always the same. As aircraft run program manager Sergeant Matthew S. Norville concluded about the crew's importance, quote, We take a tremendous amount of pride in the product we put out, as we realize the severity of any mistake we could make could be detrimental in the loss of equipment, aircraft, or loss of life. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the F-16 Fighting Falcon and its powerful engines. Stay tuned for more.